Big boy Big neighborhood. Boy. All right, and now beautiful day in the neighborhood, man. Layton Green Ooh. in the neighborhood by your damn self. Hey. By your damn uh-huh. self. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Last time we had you in the neighborhood, man, you came in with the quality control family. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Is it different now that you're in that seat? And it's yeah. going down for you? For sure. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, are we doing big boy? Yeah. <laughs> okay, by myself. Yeah. And, and, and it's one of those things, man, where you love, I love to see someone that's been putting the, the life work in, mm-hmm. then putting the work in, yeah. and then you get a chance to kind of jump on with them when you see certain things in them. And I love to watch the journey. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. And Layton, I've been here long enough where I've seen the journeys of people. I, mm-hmm. I've sat down with people on, on some of their first interviews, and now they're mega stars. So I always like to kind of invest in early so you remember yeah. this. Yeah. So whenever I need something from you in the future, you be like, damn. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, you remember this. Gotcha. He was there from the jump. Yeah, yeah sure. be like, damn, I can't front on big. Uh-uh. Like, yeah. He was there from the front. That's real. You know what? Don't hold it down because everybody else does. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I, I've said that sort of story many a time. First off, 20 years of age. Yes. And your birthday's coming up. December. December. What do you do for your birthday? Is there is there any so called turn ups? You're about to be twenty one. Like Yeah, I don't really turn up much. I like to do like fun stuff, um, as far as like amusement parks or Bowling, simple. Okay, yes. yeah. Okay, good. So that way we don't have to make no big ass plans for you. So yeah, don't I'm throw dead. no club party. <laughs> yeah, she's like, yeah, babe. I'm there. glad you didn't say like a yacht. Yeah, you know? yeah. You oh, know I might saying? do that. I'm about to turn 21, so it might be a little different. <laughs> oh, but, but quality control, they cute. They got you. Mm-hmm. you know, oh, yeah. Okay, because you don't need nothing from us, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, because soon as because she went from like bowling, you know, yeah. like a movie night big, or, you know, something small, to you know, hopscotch, yeah. You know? <laughs> like now she want a yacht. Yeah, hey, we got We do have to speak on it, man, because you got a new EP that's out. Tell yeah. your story, and you have a hell of a story to tell. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like when we look at people that we say, oh man, they're signed, they're in a good family. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That everything is rosy. But when you talk about tell your story, there is a story to be told just right. on living life in right. in in 2021 20, years, right? Right. Well, how was it, how was the growing up? It was tough, you know. Um, uh, I feel like I didn't get a lot of that out growing up. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I kept a lot of it in. So being able to put that in my music is like lifted a lot of weight. Therapeutic, huh? Yeah, and I mean, I grew up. I feel like I grew up in a household with my mom, my dad. Mm-hmm. And um, my stepdad raised me. My brother, I had an older brother. Um, I feel like I was alone most of the time. So I would always be in my room just really listening to the radio. We ain't had cable and all that. So I'm listening to the radio. That's where, like, I... So music, even, not even as you're doing music, music is kind of a a release for you, even when you're just kind of listening to it through through, through the radio before you actually create music yourself. And you say that that growing up with, with moms... And, and is the pop step pops in, in, in the household as well? Yeah, he's in the household, but he worked twenty four seven. He was like the one bringing in the money. My mom, she suffered from um, bipolar depression, so really she slept a lot of the time. Really, you know what I'm saying? She was- and, and, and at times, probably the most times when we're in our sponge years, yeah, when we yeah, need, yeah. we need that attention. For sure. You know what I'm saying? So, what's the what was the relationship like with your mom early on, Layton? I I love my mom to death. Dope. I, 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 you know what I'm saying? Still to this day, like, my mom is my everything. Um, I know that I didn't realize it back then, but, like, she was real vocal about what she went through through her childhood. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And she's just been through some stuff. And Anybody I else? just chased her. In the family musical? No. No? Nah. nah, I'm the only one. How did that come about? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and, and not just appreciate music because music is a takeaway, mm-hmm. but also discovering that you do have a voice. How do, how do you discover that you have a voice? I was always singing in the house. like Yeah, but singing in the house. Is, you know what I'm saying? I yes. can sing in the house. Yeah, but mm-hmm. my mom and, and, and they never listened to me. Okay. Like, they never <laughs> listened. They be like, shut up. Like, why why you keep singing? And one time I was playing American Idol with my cousins, and I sung for them. And they was just like, hold on. Girl, you could sing. And that was, like, the first time somebody just, like, said, you could sing for real. You said you were playing American Idol, yeah. like, just at the house? Yeah, we just make up little games. I mean, and I'm sure it was my idea because I love singing. So I'm like, let's, let's, you know what I'm saying? We played American Idol. They were the judges. Do you remember what song you sung? I sung Love by Keisha Cole. Oh, that's dope. Love, never knew what yeah, yeah, I was yeah. missing. Oh, yeah, that's, that, that's one, one yeah. Sing, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I love that song. Love it. I, every, every, anytime somebody told me to sing, I'm singing that song. But really, though? So you know. playing American Idol? Playing American Idol, they was like, oh, you could sing for real. Do your mama know you could sing? I'm just like, 
don't know. How did your mom find out that they took that her me out in the seen? living room that same moment? And like, and watch this. They like uh, sing. Did you sing? <laughs> Oh, so you was always good to be kind of on the spot, too. Were you shy? I was nervous. Yeah, yeah, I was shy just because I that was something I did in my room, in the shower, you know, just alone. And then when once they started, like, knowing I could sing, everybody wanted me to sing in the family. Like, I go to my godmama house. I'm on the porch singing for dollars. Yeah. <laughs> but I'd be like, all y'all got to turn around because I don't want y'all to look oh, at so me. Oh, so there's still an element of shyness. Yeah, I was real shy Um, just because I felt like I was real sheltered as a kid. Um. Mm-hmm. My parents kept me away from friends. You know, I had friends in school, but I couldn't go like to the house. Like, like, and they like household. Over. It was kind of was it strict? Yeah, or was it was it strict. O- and, and overprotective. Or overprotective. Just- um, my dad was really overprotective. Um, he just we lived in the projects too, so like. Mm-hmm. My mom and my daddy didn't want me to go outside, especially if they wasn't outside and they could see me. And Hell like yeah. I said, my daddy was always gone. My mama slept all the time, so really just had myself. So you occupied a home time just. Playing American Idol, singing <laughs> for sure. I had a radio. To the radio. Um, yeah, and I had a, a DVD player. We had a DVD player downstairs, and I used to watch the same uh, same movies over and over, like Prince, <laughs> Crush Groove. Damn, I was watching. I be all in your parents. Those, those yeah. your parents DVDs. <laughs> no, it like, was definitely now. my parents like DVDs. These damn DVDs. Cadillac Records. I was watching. <laughs> <laughs> was but you know what? It's on. crazy when you look in the rearview mirror, though, late, and 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 all that is. The learning process. No, yeah, for sure. What they call the Mm 10,000 hours before you you get into a position where it's like, it's almost like that, ah, damn, that's what I was doing. Right. So as you're playing American Idol, Mm -hmm. did you, when you fast forward, you audition for those competition shows as well? I auditioned for American Idol, The Voice, and X Factor. And none of them? I, like they go through through an audition process. Of course. Yeah. Did you ever make it in front of the people that we see on TV? Wow. I never made it past the first round ever. They just Damn. shut me down. And you was like, man, I play this at the house all the time. <laughs> My family <laughs> says I'm great. What are we you, doing, man? You was like, I win at the house. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I always get that golden ticket. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> so, so how do you take that energy and that fuel and not say I'm not going to do it? Because now you're in a position where I don't know how much actually comes to your home, right. to your town, where it's like, hey, we looking for somebody. Mm. How do you that not take me. that as like, damn, man, this? Honestly, I just. I was always that type of person. I felt like God, mm-hmm. what he had set for me is already set in stone, and I can't, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I just felt like that wasn't meant for me, and I, and I just felt like my time was going to come. How old were you at that time? When I first auditioned for, I first auditioned for X Factor, 12. Tw- okay, so 12, that's down. Wow, and 12. then you do American Idol. What, what at, What's the next ones? I was 16, and then I did um, The Voice at 18. So this isn't an overnight story. Oh. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because right. at 12, I couldn't imagine at 12 somebody telling me I'm good at right. something. Think about 12, for real, it's, you guys. A baby. Somebody for telling sure. you you're good at something, and then you get somewhere else, and it's like mm-hmm. you're not thinking about the – Hundreds of thousands of people right. that audition. You're right. thinking about me. Right. And somebody said, oh, you know, no, you didn't make it through. I, I just, and that's the thing. At 12, I'm going up there. I'm knowing I'm going to make it. Yeah. And then they're just like, nah, you're not what we looking for. And as know? a kid, you're thinking of everything mm-hmm. that you're going to do for you, right. your family. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, right. this is it. Like, we, we about we to make it here. happen. Do you go home as a 12-year-old immediately knowing that I could do better or at that particular moment, are you kind of, you know, deflated? Like, no, yeah, I knew. I was just like, I knew I can do better. I'm, I, and my parents gave me that pep talk. You only twelve. You know what I'm saying? And you gotta, your voice is amazing at twelve. Just know what, you, just like imagine what you can do in a couple more years. And then you go to, and now you're 16, right? And then you uh, uh, audition for which one? Uh, American Idol. American Idol. Yeah. That doesn't happen. Where you don't even get in front of the actual panel of right. judges. How do you go from that now to where it's like? How do you not throw that away? Like, I'm, I'm throwing a towel in. Man, at that time, honestly, I was going through a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I had become homeless. Mm-hmm. I was, so it was just like I wasn't even focused on that no more. You know what I'm saying? After I, that happened, I was just like, I bet I got to do what I got to do to survive at this point. At 16. You know? How yeah. homeless were you at 16? I was living in a motel with my mom and my yeah, brother, so yeah. we was just like no, all I've been working. there. It, it, it was all eight of us. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. In, in a motel, and it's crazy because when I was in, when we were homeless in, in motels and everything, I remember telling my mom mm-hmm. I, I had wrote this check out and I showed it to her, and it was from her checkbook, nothing in the account, yeah. just a checkbook. 
And I said, Mom, I said, one day I'm going to have this much money. And she told me, she said, I know you are. And I told her, I'm going to buy you. You know, I'm, 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 at the time, I'm 10. Yeah. You know what I'm real. saying? At, at the first bout of homelessness. So you are, I always had this entertainment dream. I'm, yeah, I'm going yeah. to be something. Yeah. And that's the sound like kind of the same thing that you For had sure. where even though you're kind of down, you're not completely out. Right, you know what I'm right. saying? Mm -hmm. And at 16, going in, were you mentally ready for that? No. Right. I wasn't. And then wasn't. it's also probably the same thing of this can get us out. Yeah. Right. You know, so right. you walk in with a pressure. Mm -hmm. So you don't get that. You have to go back immediately that day right. to a motel. Yeah. And then the next time you, you're 18. 18. And that's a lot of living between time, 16 and 18. Right. And at that time I had run away from home. Mm. And I ran away with a man, boy. I was chasing a boy. I had dropped out of school. Um, I was working full time at Wingstop. I had actually become a manager. Mm -hmm. I was working another job, a uh, country club, waitressing. And I was just like, I seen the voice was coming to Chicago. I was in St. Louis. I was like, yeah, let's let's do it. I, and and we drove all the way to uh, Chicago, and we sat there for hours and hours in the cold, and didn't make it. Damn, <laughs> you talking about like really? That's dream chasing, yeah. though, because at such an early age, at, even at, at a certain age, we don't get off our couch to go get it. We mm -hmm. all want it, right? But we don't get up to actually go get it. Right. We not we not going at twelve, pulling your family or somebody say, "Hey, right. I, I want to do this audition." Mm -hmm. Then come back four years later, say, "I want to try it again." Right. Or even at some of your worst, you know, worst living conditions or moments, do you say, "Let's get in the car and mm -hmm. let's drive here because I want I want to try it one more time." Mm -hmm. After the third time. How do you continue <laughs> to use that as energy, as fuel? <laughs> At that point, I was just like, okay, I don't even want to try the shows no more. At this time, I'm kind of more, I'm 18. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm realizing, like, okay, the shows ain't going to do nothing right. for me. You know what I'm saying? So at this point, still focusing on surviving. That mm -hmm. didn't work out. I couldn't really focus on music full time. I haven't even, I wasn't even creating music. Um um, I ended up reaching some biological family, and I I was just like, I ain't got nowhere to go. Can, I, can I come live with y'all? They was like, they took me in. And I started working full-time at Walmart, and I was working on getting my GED because at this point I'm like, I don't know where my future is headed. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And, and at that point, the only time I had became content, and I was just like, man, maybe this is my life. You know, yeah. my parents telling me, people like us, we don't make it. Mm. To that point, you know what I'm saying? Like we gotta, we gotta work a nine to five, or we gotta, mm -hmm. we gonna and you always. Heard that. Yeah, they, they, they never had big dreams like me. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? They, they couldn't see what I could see. I'm just like, nah, man, my God ain't just give me this voice for nothing. Like nobody <laughs> here is musically talented. I, I was just like, man, and I feel like he put me through all that I went through so I could, you know, be a voice for others. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, so. and, and very inspiring mm -hmm. and enlightening. You know what I'm saying? For and sure. and you got to think that's a lot of life and you haven't even mm -hmm. started, mm -hmm. you know, on this other side right. yet. You know, right. like like everything is is a process of going through. And and every, I, I feel like whatever comes now, you know how, like, you know what pain is. Right. You know what so-called disappointment right. is. You know what it is to be hung, homeless, hungry, hear no, people not believing in mm -hmm. you. So now... The corner that, that you're turning now is you, you paid a lot of tuition into the school of experience. Mm -hmm. And that life experience is what gets you through the boardroom, through the recording room, through the this room. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. when you come in with real life shit, that's totally different than something being being fabricated. Why the title of the EP as such? Tell your story. I just wanted to get my story out there and inspire others. To, you know what I'm saying? Tell there is just because I feel like you got to get it out. Like I said, when I honestly just started writing it and singing about stuff that I went through, it just was like, I just feel so much better. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I feel like everybody needs an outlet. Or even, like I said, I'm being a voice for others. I feel like I'm telling other people's story in my music as well. Seven songs. Yeah, because also just listening to your radio in the room, somebody was probably telling your story. Oh, yeah. You know what sure. I'm saying? And seven songs on the EP, mm -hmm. no collaborations. No. That's crazy because you're in a family mm -hmm. that would be so, so easy to yeah. say, right, oh, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like I, I, why no collaborations? I just thought it was important to get me 
to the world first. You know what I'm How old like, are you for real? <laughs> yeah, you got an old soul. <laughs> yeah. So you just felt like, no, nah, let me. And it's not that it's clutter, but right. you know, let me, just, let me tell tell my story. Right, right. I feel like, I mean, I'm gonna have my whole career to collab. Right. right? And I wanted just my first project to just be and like, collaborations too though, Layton. Those that's like low hanging fruit. Right. That's just like oh man, I can get you right. know by some I can get Cardi, mm-hmm. I can get Migos over here. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. like there's so many different ways, but you chose not to. Mm-hmm. And and I would think that that's even more of a signature of of like nah, I, I can I can do this myself. Not that you right. not that that you don't want the family, but mm-hmm. let me do this by myself because yeah, I would have definitely sure. taken the collaboration myself. <laughs> You know, I think album. album are, oh come. yeah, yeah. Are there collaborations though that you want to have that are like in your, I guess, on your list yeah. that you would like to collaborate with? Who are some of those yeah, people you'd sure. like to collaborate um, with? I'm loving Summer Walker. Mm. Love her. Uh, Ty Dolla Sign. Mm-hmm. Christian Combs. Okay, oh. love that because his whole vibe is like puffing. Okay, That's that old dope. school feel. <laughs> um, I would say Rick Ross. Okay, love him. Mary J. Go ahead. I would like to that'd be nice. Mary I J. love that. She for going sure. all outside yeah, the family. She like, she like, uh, you know, I like that. Uh, Cardi for sure. Hello. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> How do you get to quality control? Because at one point you try you say these shows aren't working anymore. These yeah. television talent, you know, America's got talent and X factors and you know, so how do you step back and create another lane for yourself? Well, after I had moved in with my uh, biological family, I just really posted a video. It was a video of me singing a Kodak song, Rolling Peace. Mm-hmm. And it went viral. And I felt like, okay, that's the sign. How many... Mm-hmm. Now, when you put up Rolling Peace, the remix, all right, mm-hmm. How? where do you put that up at? Is it just straight to your instagram or it was actually on snapchat okay and how many followers oh. do you have on snapchat i mean literally like i only had like two thousand probably so not even getting that many views how does that go extremely viral everybody started screen recording it because that's mm. when that became a thing mm. and so i was just like dang they really like this when did you start to see something was going on when everybody was just like in my snapchat like hold on you need to send me this, send me this. And they started posting it on their Instagram and posting it on their page. And I was just like, okay, let me go ahead and post it on mine. Because people was like, you need to post this. It's going to go viral. I was just like, okay. Posted it on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. <laughs> At any point when you did it, did you think that you weren't going to put it up? No. Okay, so you knew you were going to put it up. Well, when I put it on Snapchat, it was just going to be a Snapchat. Right, video. right. And, like, and, and, and you've done it before? 24 hours. No, literally, this was like the first video I ever posted with my face on it. Singing. Damn. I always used to be scared. And I used God to just cover the camera. Though. I used to just cover the camera and hide my face. I always thought I made ugly faces when I sung. So, <laughs> <laughs> so and this time, I don't know what was different. I'm literally laying on the floor, singing this song, and posted. Laying on the floor. Dude, you know what's crazy about that is floor. no drive to Chicago. No four to ten, fifteen right. hour wait, mm-hmm. you know, but c- because you did all that, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, and when you stayed true to it, and God showed you something, That's weird. and you know how when you kind of looking over here for something, and mm-hmm. then it just come from the left, mm-hmm. that had to be like, damn, look at, you know what, what I'm saying? saying, like I was like, dang, just fell in my lap, and it was cra- that's why I said it was crazy because that was the only time in my life I had be- became content, and I was just like, okay, this I'm gonna live a regular life, I'm not gonna be this superstar. Like I used to go through life like I right, when I dropped out of high school it's okay it's okay I'm gonna be right. I'm gonna be famous you know how to pep talk singing, yourself you know what I'm saying like <laughs> my my dreams gonna come true you know what I'm saying and then I was like I don't gotta go to college because I'm a um I'm gonna be a star I'm gonna be a star I don't need no you know I don't need to go to college and then I was just I was like alright I'm gonna get my GED I'm gonna go to college for culinary. <laughs> right. I didn't know what else I'ma do? Can, can you like, cook? I'm a cook? Nah, I can't cook. So I was gonna learn. <laughs> I've been singing. So I was gonna learn. Yeah. All I ever wanted to be was a singer. So that's crazy. Yeah. Beautiful. So at one point, you think you're at the realization like this may not happen. Right. So. And then at that time, God was just like, "Girl, you tripping? <laughs> you, you, you ever seen that meme where the person's underground and they're chopping yeah. at the wall? Yeah. And the diamonds are like yeah, the jewels right are right on the other side. Right like there. you was about to put your your axe down, 
And God was like, man, now pick it up. Pick it up one more time. Like, 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 don't do it. So you start to see the numbers grow. How does quality control? How how does coach? I I capitalize on that. So I start doing more covers. I'm like, okay, people like this. And I just start putting my own twist on other songs. And um, I come out with an original piece because I didn't want people to think that that was all Mm -hmm. that I did. So I came out with an original piece called Myself. And that's what like really got the labels calling and stuff. So I start. I sat down with like almost every label. Wow. Damn! How do you go from not so called being good enough for this, right, to being Yo, great crazy. enough for all this? Where you're like, hold on, I, I got options. Right. But at that time, I was like not phased, which was crazy. Yeah. I wasn't phased at all. Like that, I'm but sitting that was down the perfect with these, timing too. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I was sitting down with these labels, and I was just like, dang, I don't feel like they really know me. Or like mm. what I can bring to the table, and they just looking at these numbers that I'm producing, or these mm-hmm. covers, how viral these covers mm-hmm. went, but they don't know what I'm really worth. So right, yeah, they think they're getting an influencer. Right, and 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 I was scared that they was gonna change me or make mm-hmm. me sell something that I didn't want to sell. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not, I, I'm not doing what everybody else is doing. Right. I'm not showing what everybody else is showing. So it's like I was just scared of that, and I wasn't phased. But QC was like the the last label I sat down with and they actually reached out to me through a DM coach K and mm-hmm. P it was just like we need what to sit down what was different when they sat me down man they wanted to know my whole story like they wanted to know where I come from my background like and they people weren't really asking that nah, it was it was just genuine you know what I'm saying and they really cared and they just loved the whole movement that you know how I was moving at that moment he, they just wanted to and you weren't influenced it. by their roster, it sounds like. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, they, you know, like, you, 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 they, they took you as a I, human being. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I know y'all doing y'all thing. You know right. what I'm saying? We, I could see that. We all could see that. But it was just like more so like, dang, y'all genuine. Like, y'all, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know that, that it's really a family over there. You feel me? It's not like, it's a, it's a label, it's a business, right. but it's like, they really care. What does your family feel now that, like, Everything, if it appears, is paying is is paying yeah. or going to pay off. What they just be thanking me I, every time I talk to my daddy. My daddy just be like, "Thank you for not listening to me." Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. and you're, you're like, "Yeah, yeah, my mom." Thank God I didn't. Yeah, yeah my mama, she uh, you know, she's still fighting her battles, and mm. so we just trying to get. She lives with me and all that, so oh, that's trying hard to take too, care huh? of her. Trying to take care of her and just get her in the right mindset, especially with all this going on. You know, she worry a lot, mm-hmm. and and she just fighting some Man, demons. You have a hell of a story to tell. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, and tell your story is available for us on platforms yeah. now. And I'm gonna tell you straight up, like I gotta get married to it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I got to get as far as, like, sitting and really listening. Yeah. And I love that it's an EP because now everybody give you, like, 25, 30. So I'm like, dude, I don't need that. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't Keep need that. Short, please. But how do you that pick that seven out of all the creativity? Hard. Yeah, it's like Honestly, it's almost like, like setting like, your kids to the side. I was building my catalog up before I even just, like, started to think about a project. So once it was like, okay, we got to get an EP together, it was just like, dang, okay. But I honestly just wanted – I didn't want to jump and be like, oh, we're going to put the best stuff out right now. Or what, you know, the, the record I cut last night, we're going to throw that on right. there. Because I wanted people to see growth. You know what I'm saying? So mostly the records that I cut was kind of like towards the beginning. And, yeah, um, it was. I just wanted it to tell a story and make sense. And I felt like it was perfect. Seems as though you are. Are you well, thank you, love. Thank you. Thank you. No, nah, I had a great time <laughs> sitting with you, man. And, and like I say, as everything continues to move, don't act like you don't know us. I'm not. You know what I'm saying? Don't let Everybody them change Everybody always you. say that. I'm not. Yeah, like, man. It's because it happens. Yeah. <laughs> That's why. Mm-mm. All right, I'm going. I'm going to put you to the test. I'm gonna change for the better. Yeah, okay, right, but no, I wish you nothing but the best. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for coming thank into the neighborhood, man. Oh my show. God, thank you for coming in. And, <laughs> and your past is is what build us for our present and yeah. our future. Yeah. And man, I wish you really nothing but the best. Thank and thank you, you for coming and hanging out with thank us. You, All righty, man. Yeah. <laughs> thank you guys. Look in, look in the camera right there, and and just repeat after me. Say, I am. I am. I'm just man. We don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you are funny. No, I'm ready. Layton Green in the neighborhood. She was like, "Yeah, I am, I am. going to cut big a check for twenty five hundred dollars." <laughs> no. Layton Green in the neighborhood, y'all. Big boy big neighborhood. Boy.